Edgar Zurinkevich, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. The whole world is going through an energy crisis at the moment, triggered by the war in Ukraine. What does that tell us about how vulnerable we are to the whims of dictators? Well, I think that we are learning the lesson hard way as we speak, because we were warning our European partners and colleagues for years not to get overly dependent on Russian gas, not to build so-called Nord Stream uh, 1 and Nord Stream 2 pipelines. And unfortunately, what we see as the winter is approaching in Europe, that uh, at this point, this is going to be a harsh winter. But I do hope that we will be making all the necessary structural changes and we are not going to be any more dependent on Russia. But I also hope that countries will be learning that throughout the world. Let me ask you about this. Germany faces a severe recession if Russian gas remains cut off. Are you worried that Europe's resolve will weaken if the energy crisis gets worse? Well, there is always the risk. And I think that what we are seeing, Russia is using energy, food, migration as a weapon. And also Russia is trying to influence the public opinion in any way uh, this country can. So the worry is there. But I also believe that uh, we can actually do our best in order to avoid the worst case scenarios. And I think that uh, both European Union as a whole and also its member states, including Germany, uh, currently are trying to do their best to get this season passed. I think also that part of the answer would be to use more nuclear energy. I know this is a controversial subject. You remember that Germany actually decided uh, to close all the nuclear mm -hmm. power stations. I think that this is the time to reconsider some of the past mist mistakes, decisions, and to get back to more balanced way. So, yes, there is a risk, but I think this risk is avoidable. Let me ask you this. The US Secretary of State, uh, Blinken, calls the Baltic states a democratic wall that now stands against the tide of an autocrat. What would it take for Putin to knock down that wall? You know, uh, I think that we were lucky enough to get into NATO and the EU in 2004. If that wouldn't happen, I believe uh, the war we see in Ukraine, the war in Europe that was not imaginable even two or three years ago mm. by many, uh, we would see completely different uh, thing. And so that's why we are so grateful to our NATO allies that are increasing their presence in the Baltics, in Poland. We also believe that uh, currently one thing, what is most important, is to do everything possible to help Ukraine. Because Ukraine is our first and main defense line. Mm. So if the Ukraine uh, suffers defeat, then of course Russia will try to push further. And that's what we believe uh, should be avoided. So I do hope that NATO, EU, like-minded nations like Australia, which really does a lot to help Ukraine, will be able to keep that wall, not only in the Baltic states, but actually globally intact. Putin still has considerable public support for the war inside Russia. As a close neighbor with a, with a significant Russian minority population, what do you think it would take for him to lose that support? It is absolutely clear that majority of Russians do support the war for, for different reasons. Uh, I would say that uh, Mr. Putin should not fear losing public support so much as losing the support of its security and military apparatus. Mm. And I think that uh, he has no dilemma. We see that the Russian economy is slowing down and the Russian military machine is not as mighty as one could imagine. So if the elite, if the Russian military senses that they are losing badly, I think they will need a scapegoat. And the scapegoat is the guy who started the war. And then probably also we will see the tectonic shift in the public opinion uh, of the Russian Federation. But, you know, I know that there has been some optimism in the past. I'm not so optimistic. I think it will take quite a time. And it really depends on the good fight Ukrainians are putting and the sanctions we are all putting. And it takes time. So I think we still are in a kind of very long situation here. We need strategic endurance and we need to keep 
fighting for Ukraine, but also sanctioning Russia and Belarus, and also trying to correct all those structural mistakes we were talking earlier. Foreign Minister, thank you very much indeed for taking the trouble to speak to us. Good night. Thank you very much.